Hello investors, thank you for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns on Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about DocuSign. DocuSign is an e-signature platform. It reported its results last night and the stock has fallen after hours. And if you're a shareholder here, I, I mean, I sympathize. I, I've been there a million times and I'm sure that uh, you've been there before and you'll get over it. So we're going to talk about what happened. We're going to talk about what investors need to think about. We're going to talk about some, something positive, which is the, the business is, makes a substantial amount of free cash flow and it seems to be growing over time. And then we're going to circle around and talk about its valuation. So just going to jump right in, right? So here, let's see if you spot the pattern, right? I've highlighted here in the graph uh, Peloton, uh, uh, Teladoc, Pinterest, all meaningfully down in the last six months. The one that hasn't been down from the work from home crew um, was DocuSign, but now that has now corrected. So the market has just been absolutely remorseless. I mean, it's absolutely just, it's crazy. Pretty much anyone that's came into the market after let's say about um, September of 2020, man, you're probably holding losses right now. I mean, it's been really, really tough out there if you're in the high growth, unless you're in the fangs. If you're in the fangs or in the, the mega caps, you've probably done quite well. It's, you know, everyone's just kind of f fleeing to safety right now. But if you're in kind of high growth names, man, you've been obliterated, I've been obliterated. Everyone in the last few weeks has just been like absolute criminal. Um, so yeah, this must be a lesson for us all because myself included, that sentiment cuts both ways on the way up and on the way down okay so here's the thing right one part of the story is that revenue growth rates are decelerating okay that's like one part of the story you can see here for q4 the guidance is 30 percent year over year okay now let's just unpick this slightly okay the, so just just for context i'm talking about a fiscal year i'm not talking about calendar year so i'll always be referring to fiscal year so just to keep that in mind okay um at the end of Q2 2022, the previous quarter, they guided for the year to be up approximately uh, 2.08 billion in revenues for the year as a whole. In Q3, the guidance was again 2.89, I mean, practically the same, right? So the guidance for the year didn't change. It was just that analysts were pretty much pricing in that um, revenue uh, the beat on the top line and the guidance to be raised for the year as a whole and it was just everyone just kind of got too bullish behind this company and you know these things happen and that's how it is um so as i kind of put a bit tongue-in-cheek that um everyone is kind of like a buy and hold as long as the share price is going up it's only when share price starts selling off people ask, start asking difficult questions and if you unpick this slightly you can see that the billings for Q4 uh, meaningfully reduced. So the buildings for Q4 are gonna be up 23% year over year, okay? So buildings are a leading indicator of revenue growth rates. So I'm just gonna um, just go back here a second. So you can see here, the revenue growth rates for Q4 are pointing to 30% year over year growth. But if your buildings are only gonna be up 23%, then you have a problem, right? Because it means that the pipeline of new contracts coming in is not as strong as what you're recognizing in revenues. So over time, you need to fill that gap somehow and you need to do it pretty quickly. And it may be difficult. The second part of the story is that the number of customers for Q3 is only up 25% year over year, okay? If you've listened to my work before, you've heard me say, follow the customers. The customers is, is the biggest indicator in a high growth narrative. Uh, if you have a large, jumping customers you're going to be safe irrespective of what um, the share price is doing if you see the customer growth slow down then it poses a problem okay so here you can see that net dollar retention is up uh, was 121 percent okay so it shows to you that for q3 q3 grew at 42 percent the bulk of that came from price increases okay in a high growth name, what you want to see in the ideal scenario, you want to see customer growth leading and price increases, you know, nice, but you don't want to be relying too much on price increases. Um, and you can see that that's going to pose a problem, in my opinion. Now, why DocuSign? So DocuSign is not just an e-signature platform, okay? They're trying to be part of this whole a movement towards digitalization of the document. So they, what do they call it? They call it um, agreement cloud. So it's everything from the preparation to the e-signature, and then it's being able to kind of act on that um, on that document. So being able to kind of 
audit that document, being able to analyze that document, and then the storage in the background. So the whole ability of having electronic records reduces the number of errors that, that, that are made, it reduces uh, time on the document, and time obviously equals money. So that's the value proposition right there. Now, on a positive note, you can see here that Q3 2022 a free cash flow margin was 17%. That's an improvement from Q3 of last year, which was 10%. So there is a meaningful amount of a free cash flow margin expansion. What's more, if you look at the non-GAAP operating margins guidance for Q4 2022, it's pointing at the midpoint at approximately 18%. So some estimates on my part that I believe translates into free cash flow of 13%. So that is a 300 basis point expansion from the same period a year ago. So last year's Q4 2022, the 10% free cash flow margin. And I believe that uh, this points to approximately 13% for this year. So it's a 300 basis point improvement. So I think that irrespective of what the share price is doing, the free cash flow margin is improving. Now, just one thing that I wanted to highlight. So the stock is priced at approximately 14 times forward sales, okay? So for that, I've taken the 210 million shares outstanding times the share price and you get the 33 billion market cap. Now, previously, analysts were expecting 29% year-over-year growth rate for the next fiscal year. Now, with the, with the customer growth not being that strong, I believe the 25% is probably more fair, more reasonable assessment. So 25% uh, compounding annual growth rate Paying 14 times forward sales is probably punchy. As a rule of thumb, I typically want to pay half the multiple for the growth rate. So if I'm going to be paying, if I'm going to be getting, let's say, 25% compound the annual growth rate, I don't want to be paying much more than 12 times forward sales. Okay, so in that line, that's what I'll typically look for. That being said, if you look elsewhere in the market right now, so many high growth names have just like been absolutely obliterated that it's now it's a bias market. You can really just, you know, it, it, there's so much stuff on offer that I don't think paying 14 times for sales for DocuSign is that attractive. Now, this is what I wanted to highlight. Everyone's gonna ask me, oh, Michael, um, would, what would you do in these shoes? And these are difficult shoes to be in right now because I don't try, I try really hard not to be in positions where I'm, there's 50-50 chance of working out favorably. I'm really selective and that's why I try and kind of pick out names that have a 70-30% chance of working out favorably. Because when things sell off like that, you're not forced to act. And I always tell people, you know, the share price is not a, a reason for you to act. When the share price is going up or down, you don't have to act. It's absolutely perfectly okay for you to sit on your hands and just ride it out, provided that you've been very selective of what you bought and the valuation that you bought into it. You have that margin safety of just being able to kind of sit on your hands. And when you kind of have a slightly higher, uh, more expensive stock and things kind of, you know, hit the, 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 the wire slightly, you're kind of in a difficult position. So anyway, if you want to find out what kind of names I'm looking at right now, don't forget to check out my marketplace. It's called Deep Value Returns. You're welcome to check out what other people said, check out the reviews, check out my other work. Okay, thank you so much for listening. See you, bye.